Well, good morning. Good morning. It is early morning here, but uh, today we are going to uh, fly to St. Croix, the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. It's, um, you know, we're going to be there for three nights, four days, we're getting an early start here today. Uh, it's a 40 minute flight. 40 minute flight. And uh, here we're in the, uh, the terrains of the uh, San Juan Airport. Not the nice park. But uh, this is uh, this is Terminal D, and our uh, flight should be boarding here. Well, they said it would be boarding right Five now. Five minutes ago. But uh, it is <laughs> not. And uh, so we're uh, we're all set. We're looking forward to being in St. Croix. We've never been there before, so it should be a uh, interesting uh, four days. So we're flying uh, Silver Airlines. Looks like that's our uh, plane out there, or, or maybe it's this one here. But. Uh, Waiting to board. Here is the St. Croix Airport. Lisa here is getting us a car. We drive on the left here, so that's always interesting. But Lisa's got a little experience because uh, she took our kid to uh, to college and drove around England for a good bit. So she's the one who's driving the next couple days. Welcome to St. Croix, Bob. <laughs> so we're here having lunch at the Leatherback Restaurant here on Cane Bay, and look at this. It doesn't get better than this. And if you were a bartender, it doesn't get better than working in a place like this. I want to say something now. And I just spent the morning snorkeling out there. Bob, can you point out to them the snorkelers out there? Yep, you can see them out there. Well, there's actually scuba divers. Scuba divers. Yep. Because further off where the ocean gets dark, there is a drop off to at least 8,000 feet called the wall. So a lot of people scuba dive off this, off this beach. This area is called Cane Bay. And I just did some snorkeling and spent a while following a couple of leatherback turtles that were just eating and swimming up and going down and eating and swimming toward me. And it was just awesome. This is uh, Cane Bay, Cane Beach, here. Super nice place. Nice beach, low waves today. Sa sitting, hanging out. And it's uh, nice and shallow, but a lot of people snorkel, say a dive shop right up here. They can, it's like they take their open water dives. You know, just coming out here, this big wall goes, uh, drops off. Not too far off here, only a quarter mile off. And uh, you know, we still saw some, uh, some sea turtles here. So it was a very nice day here, including the restaurant. So, uh, nice place to visit, the north side of the island. So, this is the harbor at uh, Christiansted here in St. Croix. First thing in the morning, we actually have a little malecon, a little boardwalk here on which there's a lot of places to eat, so we're in search of breakfast. But uh, this is uh, just uh, just a beautiful, beautiful uh, way to start your day here. Getting ready for a dive here. Boats are ready. Tanks are all loaded up. Now what's interesting here is that uh, St. Croix, and actually the other two U.S. Virgin Islands, were owned uh, by Denmark at this. Uh, at uh, some point in time. So in here, you know, there seems to be an awful lot of uh, Danish architecture and there's also a historic site that we'll, we'll go to cruise through a little later, but here's one example right on the harbor. Uh, here's the uh, St. Croix, St. Thomas Ferry. Something to keep, for us to keep in mind uh, at some point in time. And this is the uh, customs house here. 
uh, mostly for the, uh, the Danish uh, West Indies Company uh, in the mid 1700s. Here's the outside of the fort. We're gonna go in, National Historic Site here. So this was uh, built in 1749 by the Danish and used until uh, 1878 when it was uh, demilitarized. Check out the schooner that's um, moored here in the harbor. You need to get in here. <laughs> so into the main courtyard area here. You can go up, ooh, can you go up there? Flag flapping. It's the flagpole. Right here's the powder magazine where they steward all the powder for the cannons. Ooh. Powder. Powder. Powder kegs. Um, to the firing platform overlooking the harbor. Seventeen eighty six, this cannon was forged. Going on over the customs house, the city, and the harbor here. And a very, very interesting hotel on this little island you get to with the uh, water ferry taxi. Here is the arsenal. That's where they kept all their weapons. Wow. I think they actually have... I don't think these are replicas. I think these are like the real thing that they sort of keep here. It's pretty incredible. Here's a scenic overlook over looking Christiansted Harbor area. There's the fort, the schooners back out here, sailboats mooring. Is that a car ferry over there? Uh, I don't know what that is. But absolutely beautiful here. Well, here we are at uh, Point Udall, which I think is the easternmost point here of, uh, of St. Croix. At uh, maybe the easternmost point of the territorial United States. We'll it check. Is indeed. It is indeed, she says. We'll put that into the comments. But uh, check this out. This is just beautiful. Swinging around over here. And this is Buck Island. This is where we snorkeled the other day. You can see some of the boats moored there. Every day the tour boats come out there and snorkel. So uh, Lisa thinks this is uh, some sort of sundown she read about, but she's gonna have to go back and do a little more reading about that and she'll put some comments in the notes in this video. So this sundial is known as the Millennium Monument and it was built here for the New Year's celebration in 2000. It marks the azimuth of the first U.S. sunrise of that year. <laughs> Here's a little plaque. It's the Millennium Monument. Uh -huh. January 1st, 2000. Yep. It always intrigues us how dry some of these islands are. And just look, you know, all these cactus, all these cacti, and uh, just super, super dry here. Going up to uh, Udall Point, the east end of the island, came across this uh, array. I mean, this, uh, this uh, came across this telescope, and this is a very long baseline array telescope. It is one of ten in the uh, in the U.S. that is used to to uh, capture uh, very faint uh, radio frequencies from outer space. Now this thing is uh, massive. It is 25 meters across, so it is just, just huge here. There's an array of 10 of these positioned throughout the United States. 
and they're all sort of tied together with a very, very, very precise clock so that uh, when they measure something they can bring, out, bring all of it together from all ten of them and, uh, and get some more accurate readings. There's some in, uh, one in New Hampshire, Iowa, Texas, New Mexico, two in Mexico, one in Arizona, California, Washington, and Hawaii. Wow, just look at this view. Come up on the, the South Shore Road. It's just tremendous. We're at the East End uh, Marine Park. Here's the little visitor center. Go, go in. And looking out over the ocean. There's a few picnic tables. I don't know what this is. We're going to find out. It's here. But it's definitely a visitor center for families and kids to learn all about marine life and the coral reefs. And that's yeah, it's really nice. The bridge between land and sea. This place is only open on Thursdays and Fridays and the, the first Saturday of the month. Wow, that never happens to us. I know, exactly. We're never here on the days that it's open. But yeah, nice and interactive. Really nice. Uh, we're just uh, briefly here at uh, Frederickstead, which is the other main town here in St. Croix. And this is where the cruise ships stop. I'll show you the pier here in a moment. It's uh, pretty sleepy here today because there's no cruise ships in town. But uh, it is one of the two major uh, towns here on the, on the island. Uh, this is the other side of the cruise ship docking area. Nice little boardwalk, Malacone. Looks like uh, some nice beaches up ahead. And uh, this is all lined with, I don't know, small shops, but everything seems to be not open today, which is probably a wise, wise decision when a cruise ship's not in port. Well, we're at the uh, St. Croix Airport getting ready to head back to San Juan. And after four days and three nights here, what do you think of our stay? Well, I really enjoyed St. Croix. And at first I thought we had seen everything, but today we did a bunch more exploring, and now I realize that I've got another week's worth of stuff I want to see and do and explore. Yeah, most, mostly on the uh, east end of the island. Mostly on the east end of the island. Yeah. You know, Frederickstead was not. It was pretty sleepy, you know, not much there, but uh, there was definitely also a lot of snorkeling places on the North Shore that we haven't even, haven't even touched. Right. You know, and, but there's a, there's a lot lot more to see here. We got to do some hiking yep. down at Udall Point. Yep. Definitely have to do that. We didn't get to go to the Mutiny um, Vodka Factory. Or, or uh, the Cruzan Rum Factory. That's right. So, so uh, we have two distillery tours we still have to do, and we know that you enjoy those. Yeah. <laughs> so. But Kristen said it was wonderful. The snorkeling was outstanding. Off Buck Island. Yeah. And um, the old Danish architecture and the history everywhere you turned was just fascinating. So we definitely, definitely recommend that you visit St. Croix, the other Virgin Island. Yep, absolutely. So until the next time, may your suitcase always be messy. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell to be notified of our upcoming videos. Hasta luego.